everyone. How are you? Do you like the movies? Can I hear? It? Yes. So it's great to be here from the motion picture business um, to talk about the Academy Software Foundation. And uh, we're, we're the new kid in, in, the, uh, in the world of the Linux Foundation, of all the different projects that are out there. Um, we just got created three weeks ago. We announced here at SIGGRAPH uh, in this convention center uh, three weeks ago. And we're in the process of setting this up. What I want to do in the next 10 minutes is to give you kind of an, over an overview of where we came from, which is a story that you'll be very familiar with, I think, from the other industries. But there's a bit of a flavor that is specific to, to us, to the motion picture business. And go a, a little bit quickly into where we're at in setting this up and the, the the specifics of how we're setting up the foundation. So, but first, I want to talk about uh, the movies generally. So, what you have on screen right now is the top 20 movies of all time by box office revenue. The motion picture business in uh, theatrical box office makes about $40 billion a year wor worldwide. These, these are just for the tickets that you buy when you go to the movies here in China and anywhere on earth. Uh, the, mo the motion pictures generate a lot of revenues in other, uh, in other ways uh, from video streaming, theme park toys, and all kinds of things. This is just the tip of a pyramid. But what's interesting to note when you look at this list of movies is that they are all either visual effects movies or animation movies. And they are all essentially, by and large, computer generated and done with software, with artists using software. And uh, you have to go down the list to number 138, um, most uh, profitable movies of all time, to get to a pure live action movie. And the movie is Mamma Mia. It did uh, $650 million. But all the movies that are up there before then have been done essentially with software, computer graphic software. And uh, the engineers that work on that, um, use open source. They've been using open source um, as the other industries have, and it's, it's become a, an important part of movie production since the beginning. There's a list of all the um, libraries that are used for open source, and these are some of them. You've probably never heard about them, but they're very instrumental in the making of the movies. ASIS, Alembic, Open Color IO, Open EXR. Two years ago, as Jim alluded to, we started an investigation at the Academy. Rob Brido from Lucasfilm um, had this understanding that perhaps the Academy could do something to help the open source community. And so the, um, the investigation went on for two years. Um, there was um, a lot of the CTOs and the director of technologies that are involved in movie making, in animation studios and VFX studios, visual effects, that got together around the same table started discussing about software and how we can improve um, the uh, development of open source. At the beginning, we really thought that, well, you know, open source is what it is. Um, it's kind of uh, grassroots um, motivated, and there's not much we can do to help that. Um, but as we proceeded, at some point, we, inv we invited Jim and um, Mike Dolan from the Linux Foundation to come and uh, first uh, witness what we were doing. And very quickly they said, gently, they said, well, maybe there are ways that we can, um, we can help with this. And they started um, telling us how we could fix some of these problems that you see on screen right now. So the Academy Software Foundation uh, was created. It's a collaboration between the Linux Foundation and the Academy. Um, the goal is to provide a neutral forum for open source software in the motion picture business and also the broader media industries, and to, to, for that platform to allow for collaboration um, on the creation of uh, images for visual effects, animation, and sound. We have members. Um, this, this project, this foundation, is set up like many of the other Linux Foundation projects. These are our founding members, uh, so you recognize the names there. Um, Walt Disney Studio, in particular, is, is uh, where Pixar is and Lucasfilm is and Disney Animation is. Um, you have um, a Blue Sky, which is part of Fox Studios. Um, you have uh, VFX vendors. Uh, DreamWorks is part of NBC Universal. 
Um, you have Weta Digital, a visual effects vendor who's famous for the Planet of the Apes movies. You have Animal Logic in Australia who is uh, famous for the Lego movies. Um, you have Double Negative in London um, that is famous for the James Bond movies and a lot of live action work done in, in London. And, uh, and then our, our technology partner, Google Intel, uh, Epic Games. And we um, together created the first phase of this foundation, Foundry Side Effects, also general members on the software side. Um, this um, is a slide about our launch three weeks, three weeks ago, announced on August 10th. Um, and uh, you see on this image Rob Brido uh, doing a keynote in this room, actually, um, about the creativity in motion picture. Rob was the visual effects supervisor of the latest Star Wars movies, the solo movie, and he presented about the process of creativity, and he announced the foundation um, as part of his keynote. And uh, we had a good deal of press from our own uh, trade press within the motion picture business and also from the technology press um, out there. And um, the mission for the foundation is simple. Increase the, the quality, quantity of open source contribution by establishing three things, a governance model, a legal framework, and a community infrastructure. And we want to lower the barriers of entry for developing and using open source in our industry. Um, there's a lot of things we're doing that you, uh, you're al already doing if you're working within the mature um, Linux Foundation uh, projects. This is all familiar to you and probably old news, but it's new to us. So thank you for in indulging us. So our goals are to connect, to coordinate across projects, um, to develop a continuous integration and build infrastructure that is open to all uh, so that we can streamline the development of build and runtime environments, provide better, more consistent licensing template on the legal side, and provide a clear path for participation and code contribution in our industry. So essentially, we want to bring um, the engineers who are working hard, and in the case of open source, uh, libraries and initi initiatives, uh, often the engineers have seen a problem that needed to be solved, was not mandated by anyone. They took initiatives and they, they wrote the code that was needed. They open sourced it for everyone to share. That process um, in the motion picture business has been um, in the shadows a little bit and we want to, the foundation wants to shine a light of the work of the engineers and, and, and uh, bring them uh, resources and structure. Uh, the governance, um, so our foundation is um, a nonprofit. It's under the Linux Foundation. Um, so it's outside of any particular studio or uh, company's firewall. Um, it's, uh, there's a governing board, uh, as you would expect, and um, there's a technical uh, project group, a technical advisory council. Uh, that uh, is independent from the governing board to ensure that the engineers <coughs> in this organization continue to make the decisions about the project. So it's sort of a, a division between church and state. Uh, the, um, this is the graph. You've seen a version of this many times. Um, the governing board, the technical advisory council, and the projects. Um, and so the TAC role is to establish the best practice, identify the resource, coordinate with the community, propose a new project, and we're in that phase right now. The, our foundation is new, so um, we have a number of uh, target projects, but uh, none of them are in. We are an empty vessel three weeks into it, so now the process is a lot about bringing the projects in, and uh, the TAC is doing that, also being formed as we speak. And, um, the projects will sit on this uh, continuous integration infrastructure that comes to us from the Linux Foundation. Uh, we've already uh, tested some of the open source libraries that you've seen before on the uh, continuous integration. I don't think I need to sell you in the benefit of that. In our industry, uh, what this will do, however, uh, is that we'll bring um, an open source uh, infrastructure for our own projects at the foundation, but also for everyone to see in, in the industry uh, and open source infrastructure. So right now, um, people who use open source libraries in their software or in their production pipeline um, have a version of that that is not open source, uh, that has been developed internally and 
each one of them is slightly different. And if you want to get into using or contributing to open source software, you have to build one, a, a form of a build infrastructure for yourself. And um, the, uh, this is all fine and good, but it's a significant effort. Uh, many smaller studios, mid-size and smaller studios, shy away from open source because of those technical requirements. Now, if we have our CI infrastructure in the open, the hope is that it can be adopted uh, wholesale by some small studio who want to get into open source and contribute and um, that it will also help the other, the bigger studios that already have an infrastructure to, to standardize some practices over time. Um, there is an aspect, so obviously the Linux Foundation is, is focused on Linux. The largest studios in the motion picture business uh, are uh, Linux based for their production uh, pipelines, but we also need support for Mac and Windows server, so that's in the plan to, to include that as well as a GPU. Uh, for the real-time uh, software and process that are gaining traction. And um, the benefits, so this slide here, I will admit, is more for our own industry where we come in and we communicate and socialize uh, what the CI infrastructure is about uh, than for you because you, you are aware of these benefits. Uh, but there'll be forums that'll come with it. Um, there'll be reference build produced outside of any one organization. Um, as I said, we want to lower the barrier of entry and we want to increase the adoption of uh, something called a VFX reference platform, which is a, uh, a, a recommendation platform that has been created already by volunteer in our industry. So we want to go from recommendation to action on some of the good, good work that has been done by the volunteer in our industry. So um, we have three projects that are um, tested on the CI infrastructure right now. OpenEXR, which is a library that deals with, uh, um, with uh, high dynamic range images that existed since a long time inside production. Um, OpenColorIO that deals with color management within a production pipeline and OpenVDB that deal with deep data, the deep image data for doing simulation and uh, explosion and all kinds of things like that. And we're working on the Windows build. Um, the um, information on our uh, infrastructure is here if someone wants to come and see it. And um, this is how to participate. So if you're interested in the motion picture industry and you're an engineer um, and you want to check out what's going on with this foundation, this is a good point of entry. We have set up the lists um, and, uh, they, uh, and the TAC is going to be formed with its own um, uh, chairman um, very soon and there'll be a lot to do. So we are welcoming uh, all help we can get in order to set up the, the foundation in the years to come. I see that my clock has been reset. Do I really have more time? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So I've gone through through all of it, but we have um, we have anecdotes to to share in in any number of ways. I was listening to what Van Jones was saying in, in his keynote or his presentation earlier, and um, with great power comes great responsibility. Everyone uses these analogies and in the motion picture industry, although the products we make are for entertainment. Uh, we do feel that we have a great responsibility to carry our products uh, in a way that inspire and, um, and foster innovation um, in, in the community. So a really important part of this um, effort that we're doing is to now shine a light on the engineers that have been working very hard um, in the trenches to enable all these great motion pictures that we've seen on screen. Um, there are movies like uh, that were on the list that I showed earlier, like the Fast and the Furious movie, for instance, the last one, where although it looks like a live action movie through and through, when you know how it was made, um, it's really by and large a computer generated movie. And um, there was some press that was made uh, about, in particular in that movie when Paul Walker um, it passed away in the middle of production and he had to be recreated for the, the duration of the, 
of the movie itself, so it was um, an entirely software-based um, exercise uh, to, to uh, find the best way to recreate uh, the actors for the last performance in the movies. There's a lot of work that's going on to simulate the world in the motion picture industry and to uh, render it in a way that is photoreal so we can also uh, create new worlds and allow the filmmakers to bring anything they want on screen, no matter where it is in the future, in the past, um, in places that don't exist. And so that story could be told um, in these environments so that we can explore through our mind the great what if could happen if this, if that, um, both in, uh, from romantic comedies out to, to science fiction. And um, more and more, this is uh, software-based and this is the work of engineers. So we want to uh, really bring uh, a spotlight on the work of the engineers that work in the motion picture industry. As Van Jones was talking about, writing code today is perhaps the most powerful activity that you can do in terms of changing the world. We certainly know that it's the most powerful activity you can do to make movies. And um, so if you're interested, please don't hesitate to join us. Thank you very much. Thanks, David. Thank you.